In this edition of Ask Me Anything, I got a question from Melissa on Instagram. It said, at least once a week, I wake up and my neck is so stiff and I can barely turn my head for most of the day. I have tried at least 10 different pillows. I go to the chiropractor every week to get adjusted and do yoga and spin class at least four days a week. I'm only 35 years old and getting frustrated that this keeps happening and continues to get worse each time. Is it really the sleep that is messing it up? Are the adjustments making it worse? Is there anything I can do to fix this problem before it gets worse? In this episode, I do my best to explain why sleep really isn't the problem, how too much exercise can do more harm than good, why getting adjusted makes it worse, and some action steps to keep this from happening and ruining their day. I hope you learned something new and enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Injuries Explained Project, where we are on a hell of a mission to make chronic injuries obsolete by helping anyone that is injured and in pain get properly educated and informed on all their treatment options so they can have the best possible outcomes without ever having to resort to pain pills, injections, or surgeries, which only make things worse. My name is Dr. Matt Maggio. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out the show. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started, all of the information presented in this episode is strictly my opinion and in no way, shape, or form should be misinterpreted as concrete medical advice or recommendations. If you're currently injured and in pain, please reach out to a qualified medical practitioner for a full diagnosis. If you've already done that, you haven't got any real answers, you are frustrated as hell and you just want to know what's going on and get your injury Moving in the right direction to get it fixed, you can request an injury consultation directly with me. All of the information to do that is available in the show notes or wherever you might be consuming this content. Now that we've got the boring stuff out of the way, let's get right into the show. These episodes of Ask Me Anything, um, I did my first one a couple weeks ago. It was really popular and I got a ton of questions. So I'm going to try to do these a little bit more often on the podcast. So as I said in the intro, quit blaming sleep. It's actually not sleep that's causing these problems for Melissa and maybe any of you out there that's listening to this. It's actually one of the things that's helping the most. We've been just... I guess, misinformed or conditioned to the idea like, oh, I slept on my neck wrong. It must be the sleep. It's not sleep. Sleep is the most important thing and it's actually helping. So what's really going on, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you, I call it like you got like Frankenstein neck, you can't turn your head. It's like, holy crap, this sucks. Like you lift your head off the pillow and it just feels like shit. Very lousy. What's really going on, causing you to feel this idea of like, oh, I just slept on it wrong. So I'm gonna get a little fancy here. And what most likely you're experiencing is what's called an internal disc derangement. Yeah, that sounds pretty fancy, internal disc derangement. So what's really going on there? So inside your your neck in your joints, in between the bones is this thing called the disc. It's like a shock absorber. It's really good at handling shock. And not like shock, shock, but like forced up and down. That's what it's designed for. And in the middle, it has like this toothpaste substance. It's called the nucleus. And then it has these rings that surround them. They're called annular fibers. And then what happens over time is all the muscles um, around that area, you know, specifically around the joint and then you get it in the ligaments as well. They develop a lot of what's called scar tissue. Scar tissue makes the muscles weaker, less flexible. I covered that in depth in episode two, I think, as we went in like what scar tissue does, how it causes it. But then what happens over time is now those muscles actually put more pressure on the disc and the joint in there. And now what happens instead of your disc being like a good shock absorber, it actually starts to slide and grind in a different way you get a little bit of tearing inside of that disc and then that toothpaste comes out. And when the toothpaste comes out, that's why you feel really lousy in the morning. It's hard to explain that over the podcast. So what I'm gonna include in the description or the show notes or wherever you're consuming this is a video, uh, a a visual video of me going through all this, drawing some pictures so you can really understand what's going on and get a better uh, visualization of what's going on. So why is it worse worse in the morning. I covered that in depth in our last AMA episode, episode seven. But basically, 
what's happening is the inflammation is building up from the disc damage, all that scar tissue forming, and then you're not getting enough blood flow going in, and then all the waste product gets stuck in there as well. Blood can't get in, bad stuff can't get out, pools overnight, disc gets bigger as you're sleeping, and that's why it's worse in the morning when you first get up. So let's break down each thing Melissa's doing to try to help and see if they're actually helping or making the, the problem a lot worse. So number one was the pillows. You know, they tried 10 different pillows. Um, it's really not the pillow's fault. It's really the discs and muscles are just angry and they never get a chance um, throughout the day to like clear out that inflammation because that scar tissue is building up more and more. It pulls up at night and then hurts really bad in the morning because it never got a chance to clear itself out. So we blame the pillow, we blame sleep, but it's really coming from other things in there. Um, adjustments. I'm sure you're seeing a theme in this podcast about being a chiropractor that doesn't do any adjustments and just how anti-adjustments I am. Um, specifically in this situation, I covered more in depth in episode six, like why adjustments are bad and cause problems. You can go back and listen to that one. So why is bad in this situation? So what happens over time is those ligaments or those annular fibers that I talked about, they're, they're trying to heal. And each time you do the adjustment is they, they tear again. And then you have to kind of start all over. So that clock continues to have to restart. You know, it's almost like the body's going in there and filling it in, trying to buffer that area. And then you get the adjustment and it rips it free. So the problem for the adjustment is it does temporarily feel better when you do the adjustment, but it's not fixing anything. It's actually making things worse. So I'll get a little more fancy with this, but basically think of your spine and where it's at. And it basically has two pathways that that travel up it. And it's called your lateral spinal thalamic track. Look at me trying to be all fancy. But basically, in that track, one thing runs up there called pain. And then the other thing runs up there, which is called vibration and sensation. So what happens is when you get the adjustment, it blocks all that pain. And those mechanoreceptors or those vibration things, they start to fire and it temporarily feels better. It's kind of like when your thumb is stuck in a door and you pull it out and you start to shake it. That's what's actually happening. It doesn't actually fix anything. It just makes you not think about it and block some of that pain. Now, there's a problem. And what the problem is, that tightness and that stiffness was done for a reason to unload the disc and protect it. It's kind of like, eh, what is it like? It's like spraining your ankle and you know to limp, that's what's happening in there as well. So now what happens is now you have a temporary window of feeling better, but the disc is no longer protect, pro protected. Um, so it actually makes it worse in the long run. Oh, yoga, yoga, yeah. I'm a big fan of some restorative yoga and getting some things moving. Uh, one position I would definitely avoid would be too much time in the downward dog position. That really loads up the neck, puts a lot of pressure on those discs. Another thing that would help would be do the yoga a little later in the day, not first thing in the morning or late morning, like more afternoon. That gives the disc, the disc some time to get pumping, get some of that inflammation out, and then move better, and then the yoga is going to be a little bit uh, more helpful than actually hurting it. Um, next one is spin class. Hey, it's great to get cardio in, but the problem with the spin class is you get tired in those longer classes, and when you start to get tired, your head starts to hang more, you put more pressure on the discs, and that can cause scar tissue to form and put more pressure in there. And another thing, I would also do this a little later in the day uh, and for less time. Well, one thing that I would recommend is try a few rounds of what's called a Tabata on a bike. Um, if you don't know what a Tabata is, basically what happens is you go balls of the wall for 20 seconds, then you rest for 10 seconds, and you do eight rounds of that. And get pretty smoked, you get good cardio, you get good wind, you get the same results as doing that 45 minute or that hour long spin class without the wear and tear of being in a bad position for a long time. And like I said, I would also not do these activities on the same day. You know, I see a lot of people that do like a yoga spin combination and it's just too much load in those muscles and those joints on those discs. What I would do is alternate it. So one day I would do just the yoga and then the other day I would just do the spin. Don't worry, you'll be fine. You're not gonna lose any of your gains. You're not gonna 
go mentally crazy because you can't get your outlet or your workout in. You'll actually get more out of it. It'll be more effective. And the best part is you won't be dealing with these neck flare-ups all the time and not being able to turn your head. That kind of sucks too. So how would I help this problem and what would I do if it was my problem directly? Number one is I would start by just taking a whole week off to deload. What does that mean? Just deload. So only thing I would do would just be to walk. Now you'll be fine. Trust me, it's only one week. Your body will thank you and you're gonna feel a heck of a lot better. Number two is I would make those changes to the workout schedules to later in the day and opposite days and then do those Tabatas instead of that spin class. Number three, stop getting adjusted. It's just making everything worse. I made that very clear. Number four is I call it the try my being a human program every morning. I covered that in the episode about why you feel so lousy when you get up. The idea is like hydrate, walk, breathe, be a human. Another thing that's really good is what I call the 10 minute laydowns uh, throughout the day. So you go hard all day and then take a little bit of a break here, lay down for 10 minutes. And what that does is it decompresses those discs, allows those muscles to relax a bit, little bit, gives your body a chance to kind of clear out some of that inflammation so it's not so bad at the end of the day and it won't be as bad in the morning. And then lastly, if you do have an episode where you can't turn your neck or it's really sore and you're just like, what the hell, just leave it alone for the first few days. It's tightening up for a reason. It's stiff for a reason because it's trying to protect something. Don't try to make a massage appointment right away. Don't stretch it. Don't get adjusted. Leave it the hell alone. Let the body do its thing. Let it heal up because the body knows better than you do. And it's tightening up for a reason to protect that underlying disc injury and keep it from getting worse. But if you continue to do those treatments over and over again before it starts to heal up, that's why it keeps coming back. That's why the adjustment is pissing it off. That's why all the exercises are pissing it off because you're never giving it a chance to heal and you're just having to start it up over and over again. And what do they always say? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing every single day and expecting a different result. I think that's all I got. So please support the show by sharing it with others. If you do have any questions or topics you want me to cover on AMA, just send an email directly to us that's listed wherever you're consuming this. And lastly, if you're looking for real answers about what may be going on with your own injury and you're really just tired of getting jerked around by the medical system, then please reach out, request an injury consultation with our team. All the information to do that is available in the show notes or wherever you might be consuming this content. Thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.